Hello, brothers and sisters. Um, I don't care if people call me crazy. I really don't care anymore. I mean, it doesn't matter, you know? Um, I just know what I know and I feel what I feel. And I know that Jesus is coming soon. Um, I just shared a video on uh, Facebook and uh, I'm kind of getting away from Facebook. I feel like I'm just... I'm not... I don't feel Facebook as much anymore. I'm only going to use it to send messages to my cousin. I, uh, I feel like a drawing away from everything of this world. And a lot of Facebook is of the world, so I'm going to... We'll continue on this channel until the trumpet sounds, which I believe could be at any moment. A gentleman on a video that I shared, I don't know who he is. The person who shared it didn't know, but it was sent to different children of God. And um, he said that uh, the Lord, he saw Jesus with the angels and Jesus said he was coming. And he said, no, not now. He said, too many people aren't ready. And the Lord told him to look at his watch and it was bare. There was no numbers or nothing on it. He ran to his cell phone to get it out of the car and there was nothing. And his father-in-law in the dream called and told him and he said he went to look for the clock and there was no numbers on it there was there's was, all the clocks were frozen in time brothers and sisters I, I believe the time is now last night I, I don't understand this dream I had I was with my niece and my nephew they were little at the time um, these are the ones that live in homosexuality as I tell this, my my emotions inside, I don't even know how to explain it, okay? I was not fearing what happened, but I was fearing my mom and dad over what happened. My little nephew and I were in the bathroom fixing up for them to take their baths. And you remember the old um, heaters that used to have the um, slates in them that, you, that the fire came up in and space heaters um, we had one of those and my nephew had lit it but there was no line hooked to it I mean I guess I don't know because it was like in the hallway we were cleaning the bathroom and I brought it back in and I set it in the spot where it went at and there was no line or nothing to it but yet there was heat coming out of it and we had some form of a fan behind it and um, I remember my nephew was doing something and there was like this white mantle in the bathroom like a fireplace mantle and it started smoking like it was on fire and at first I was like oh no mom and dad are going to get mad and the one thing I thought was well I'll get the fire extinguisher and put it out well I think about that is and I'm getting this just coming to me but where am I um niece and my nephew are living their lives in that homosexual life I think the fire represented them burning up and there's nothing personally I can do because I didn't even see where I could put the fire out I mean I seen the smoke I seen it like turn into wood but then I saw it, sh it stopped you know what I'm saying and when they were little I may have if, if I was following God I, I may have had a chance to help form them for the Lord but now that they're in an adult 24 and 25 years old they don't want to listen to their 46 year old uncle telling them that they're lost and they need to get right um, many of you already know those of you who have been watching the channel for a while knows I told you guys about my nephew uh, Dustin J. Estep's his name and my niece's name is Brandy Ann Estep well, Brandy and Nicole Estep she has two middle names Supposedly the end came from my mom, but I don't know. But anyway, um, Brandy Ann was my mom's little, little. She was my mom's little angel, you know. I mean, she told her, she said, "You keep that body because you could be a model." Because Brandy was real skinny and stuff, but then she gained weight and everything. So anyway, Brandy is still a beautiful person. Only by looking from the outside, you wouldn't know that because she cut her hair off into a mohawk she's 
became what they call a bitch in the lesbian lifestyle and she was on my Facebook until about a few days ago, about a week ago. I took her off because I didn't want her on there anymore. I, uh, I didn't want to have that thrown up in my face because that's not who I am anymore. I don't live in that life that was past. I left that residence many years ago and I don't intend on returning there. But in this dream, they were supposed to be getting a bath for school. And Dustin had said something to Brandy about, you know, you need to get your bath. Like, it, she had to go first. She had to go first. So maybe it means she needs to turn from that lifestyle before he will. But I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what's what anymore, okay? All I know is, I can look at her profile and see her, well, I don't like seeing her pictures of her kissing, a girl kissing her on the cheek or nothing, but I can look at her profile and I don't get bad vibes like I do when I look at my nephews. I just like, I can sense the, the evil. It's like there's more than just homosexual with him. There's more behind what he's doing wrong. I don't know, maybe not, I don't know, but maybe he's on drugs. I don't know. I have no clue. All I know is I love them both and I have laid them at Father God's feet. He'll take care of them. If they hear him, hear his voice and come to him, they will be saved. A lot of people are saying, well, you know, we're not ready for the rapture to come. There's too many people not ready yet. Well, you know, God's been sounding the alarm. God's been sounding the alarm. Have you? This is to those of you who are sitting there in your chair right now thinking, well, you know, we need more time. We need more time. God's given us over 2,000 years. Okay? There's time right now while the trumpet hasn't blowed for you to go and sound the alarm to the lost in your heart, in your life. Some of them you can't talk to, but you can go before the throne of God and pray for them. Pray for them. Or cry out to God and ask Him. Cry out to God. God's waiting on your prayer. God's not going to wait much longer. I truly believe, I've heard many people say here, and it's really, I've heard it for years, since probably 09, I've heard people saying that the Lord's told him he was coming. But these people now that are saying it, there's, a, there's an urgency in their voice that was not in the others. It was like some of the people proclaimed it, but you didn't really get the feeling. You wanted to feel it because you want, children of God, we want to go home. But it's like these people, there's an urgency in their voice that is strong. It, it, it's a strong urgency, and I believe that it's a true urgency. I believe we are going home. I was telling a friend of mine yesterday, Sister in Christ, I was telling her, uh, well, I also told a few other sisters in Christ, too, that um, I felt like um, I, I, I had to figure out what kind of expression or what kind of metaphor to use for this. And the only one I can come up with was um, a pop bottle that's got a lead on it, and it's pressured, and you need to turn it to let the pressure off. That's the way my emotions feel. It's not an emotional roller coaster. It's more of a pressure. And it's not anything about me. It's, it's got to do with people I know. Like the other day, I said this in my video yesterday, a neighbor of mine who drank said, I, I, I'm feeling, he, I think he said, and I said, excuse me? He said, I need to quit drinking. I need Jesus. And, and I'm praying that was right. He was over here yesterday and helped my cousin bring the groceries in, and and uh, he wasn't like he he wasn't himself. He had a you could tell he was really thinking about stuff, you know. And I just pray that God continues to show him that he does need to let that beer go. The beer and there's people that think well it's okay to drink. Well, I had a, a lady on Facebook that I unfriended because she said there's nothing wrong with having a, a drink. Okay, well, the Bible was pretty plain when it says, don't let me come and find you drunkard. And think about it to a holy God, one sip of beer, you'd be drunk. Okay? Um, some people may drink beer in, in a way that they're, uh, don't chew on that boy. Uh-uh, don't do that. Uh, in case you guys are wondering, I was getting on him. He's getting down now. <laughs> he's such a silly little cutie. Um, and I mean cutie, too. He's a cutie, but he's a meanie. He likes to chew things. But anyway, I'll, don't all cats. But anyway... So, I unfriended her because she was upholding drinking. Okay, if you're going to uphold drinking and you're upholding homosexuality, you're upholding drugs. Because, you know, most homosexual, homosexuals, they, they, they live to get high. It's the only way, really, they can live 
happily because I know when I was in the life, all I wanted to do was to stay stoned. Because well, when you were stoned, the reality that you were in sin, the reality of the pain was not there. When you were not stoned, I don't care who you are, there's always this feeling inside of you saying, why am I not happy? Why am I not complete? Why am I always still feeling something missing? Well, you know, I'm going to tell those of you who asked that question to yourself. I was involved in a relationship in 08 with a gentleman. And he was a nice guy and everything. And, 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 and he needed my help at the time because he lost his mom. And that was, I think, the only parent he had left. Um, I don't think he knew his dad. But I helped him through some situations. And his situation helped me to come to the Lord. I didn't feel the love that I felt before in relationships. I was beginning to physically break down big time. Um, but with Charlie, with it. Anyway, like I was saying, would you put it? Get. All right. Anyway, um, sorry about that, brothers and sisters. <sighs> when you have animals, it's like having children. At least to me, it is because I don't have children. So, and I have my baby, which he is my baby. I thank God for that cat. I did this morning. I thank God for my home, my family, my friends, everybody. Thank God for you guys that listen, because that means I'm doing what God wants me to do. When I was in that lifestyle. I was, um, always feeling alone, depressed, and I never really knew why until one day I was in a recliner in my living room while I lived in Beckley, and I asked God, I said, why am I not happy, Lord? I said, I've got a beautiful home, I've got my, my baby brother, I've got a man who cares about me, all this stuff. And when was I ever happy? Well, for one thing, God let me know that the man part in my life was not his will. And he let me know when I was happy. He showed me a picture in my mind back when I was about probably 10, 11 years old. And I was at my neighbor up on the hill, which she's passed away quite a few years back. And we were on her front porch singing choir songs. We used her steps as a choir loft, and we were singing gospel songs and I was happy and I remember thinking back at that point in my life I felt I belonged to something all my life I always felt I was an outcast I never belonged to anything but I belonged at that time I belonged to the Lord and I walked away because I was young and, and, and nobody was nobody was helping me to um understand what exactly what exactly I was missing no one was letting me know what I needed to know which was the love of God no one was explaining Jesus to me no one would help me to understand I had no one to share my feelings with about this you know the only ones that were around me were the ones that wanted to hurt me sexually physically and mentally and the thing I growed up knowing was that that was the right thing to do because all the grown-ups around me never talked about God and I do not blame my mom and dad because they were in the same boat no one never talked to them but I know before they left this world they get they got themselves right with God I know they did because they gave their heart to God just days before thank you Lord Jesus for getting me thank you God for reaching down there's these people in your life that you don't realize don't know Jesus because no one never took the time to tell them there's little children running around cussing people out because they don't know about the love of God. All they've ever seen is drunk, drinking and alcoholism and cussing and fussing. and They're probably even involved in sex because of the fact that's all they see. When there's drugs in a house, chances are there's un, 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 unmarital sex going on. Even married couples will, will fool around with other married couples. It's called uh, swingers or hustlers or whatever. Well, swingers, hustlers is what take you for your money and everything else. Brothers and sisters, the time is now. We need to help these youngsters to know something. Pray for them. 
pray for them. There's a lot of churches that offer like a, uh, show you guys what's going on here. That's what's going on here. He is like all over right now. Charlie, you need to find somewhere. Lay down and be good. Um, there's a lot of things going on right now and I know from living in the homosexual life there's people out there that make fun of me there's one person in particular who tells me that I'm denying my the, I'm denying my um, my past well yeah I deny my past because I no longer live there um, the situation is that I know where I was then I was heading to hell and anyone who's living in that lifestyle, regardless of what you may hear from a man, supposed to be a man of God behind a pulpit, if he's telling you it's okay to be homosexual, he's telling you it's okay to be living with your partner, it's okay for a man and a woman to live together out of marriage. Uh, I had a friend yesterday or a couple of days ago tell me that, uh, you know, her friend told her that she should, uh, this guy that she's talking to, she should, he should get his divorce, she should get her divorce and get married to each other. They would stand up for them. Well, both of them have been married over four times. Um, and she mentioned, she said, well, it doesn't matter what we do. We're living in adultery anyway. Well, if you know that, that means you need to stay away from it, you know. And I kind of told her that. I mean, I don't hide nothing from this person. I don't. I told her the truth. And I also want to ask you guys to remember a friend of mine whose brother passed away this morning at about 4 o'clock this morning. Um, he had cancer. and He passed away. And she was going today to read the Bible with him, and he passed away this morning. They just recently got uh, back in contact with each other after having some family troubles. So just remember them, please. Just remember the Barker family. Um, I, I want to add, you know, get back to what I was saying, brothers and sisters. You know, um, she, my cat is just into everything this morning. I think he's a crazy cat. Maybe he's going over to lay down in the bar. I don't know, brothers and sisters. I'm just so beside myself. You know, I am. I don't know what to do. Um, Anyway, getting back to what I was saying, I knew back in that time in my life that I wasn't doing, I know I wasn't doing right when I was with this guy, and it was at that time that God showed me when I was happy was when I was with him, and I knew I had to get back in church. I knew God was calling me back to come back in church, and um, I did I came back to the Lord and when I say back to the church I meant back in the body of Christ not necessarily to a building um, that's not what makes a Christian a Christian not by going to church sometimes churches make ones not to be Christian so they don't teach them the truth uh, being a Christian is having a true relationship with Jesus Christ that means seeking his will like today I, when I was listening to that video I told you guys about uh, the guy prayed that God would take his thoughts captive I'm God, I'm asking you to, in this, as I prayed before, I'm praying it again. Take my thoughts captive. I want my whole body, mind, soul, and strength to be on you. Help those people that know you not to come to know you through me, if they're around me, through my cousin, through my other brothers and sisters on here. Let them be a light to shine in their darkness to bring them back into your kingdom or bring some into the kingdom. God, I know your return is near. Help me to help others and help others to help others. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, sometimes a prayer is as simple as just a little word, okay? Hold on just a second. Because I'm in the middle of a video. Just get the, just get the clear blue. Be fine. Okay. All right. Well, get, do me a favor. Get two packages of them. Get a, get a package of blue and a package of red. All right. I thank you. Later. Okay. Um. Like I was saying, you know. Um. I just feel like we need to be, um, sorry about that phone call, we need to be seeking people, 
who are needing God. We need to pray God will lead us to them. I really feel that God's led me to this person in my life, and, and I do feel that he's thinking about it really hard. I really do think he's thinking about it really hard. I do believe that in my heart. I believe he's thinking really hard about it because there is so many things happening right now that are not... For people who don't know the Lord won't know their end time signs. I, I, my heart goes out for my brother Chuck. I mean, even though he did things to me, he treated me like a dog. He didn't want me around him. I still love him. He's still my brother. I still love him. But I don't know where he's at in, in his life. I don't know where he's at in his life, and I don't know where he's at in his life. As following Christ, I mean, I don't know. If he doesn't know anybody to lead him to the Lord, then he wouldn't know. He wouldn't know how to come to the Lord. But I just pray that God will send that person into his life and lead him away from the drugs and stuff. And, and it can happen. And one day it can happen. My brother could be that soul God's waiting on. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I don't know. My niece and nephew, the dream was like telling me that, yeah, there's a fire burning on them. And I've, I've tried to extinguish it. I've tried to distinguish it. Um, there was no control line to stop it. You know what I'm saying? Like turning the gas off to the heater. There was no gas line to turn off. I just want to be on fire for the Lord and I want to continue to seek Him and His will be done. And I know that, and I want to tell you guys, I wish I had a way of pausing the video and going back and completing it, but I don't. <clears throat> I don't have Movie Maker or nothing like that, so I just have to trust with doing it like this. Um, I ought to call my cousin back and tell her to see if she can find a cheap webcam for me for my other computer, but it's not important. Um, There is so much stuff happening right now. I don't understand anything right now. I don't know... I don't know anything right now. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I know that things are not as they seem to be. I know that things aren't what they seem to be. Um, we, we just need to stay strong. We, we need to stay strong. We need to stay strong. Um, brothers and sisters, I feel like... We need to um, pray for everyone we know of because time is running out. I feel an urgency inside of me. Uh, I'm going to go and get that link for that video where the guy was talking. I didn't do the story justice because I don't remember exactly how he said it because I only listened to it one time. But it's just a short video, like three minutes long. Or maybe top, between three and five minutes. I can't remember exactly how long. But you can feel the urgency in this man's voice. Jesus is coming soon. And uh, there's no doubt he's coming soon. No doubt he's coming soon. Um, there's no doubt he's coming soon. You know, we can all... We can all set and we can all think of things we need to do in our own flesh. But instead of allowing yourself to think fleshly, think godly. Ask God to reveal to you the things you need to do. Right now it's about Him. It's not about me or you. When we came and knelt down at that altar or bowed our head, whatever we did, to come to the Lord, bowing our head before the royal king, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is going to be such an honor. If you haven't come to Him, please listen to me. If you're on here today, maybe you came to mock and scoff. Maybe you came to make fun of me, ridicule me. I don't care what you do. Do whatever you must. But remember this. God's reaching out to you right now. He wants you to come to Him and ask Him in. All these things you're doing against people well, you're going to know exactly where they came from. They come from the pits of hell. Anytime you come against a child of God who is only on here doing what they know to do to bring people to the, light, the kingdom before it's too late, you're doing it because the devil's got you blinded to do so. Listen to me, okay? 
You didn't come here by mistake. You came here because God's telling you now, come to Him. God is saying, come to me now. Don't delay any longer. Come to me now. Jesus' return is at the door. Brothers and sisters, you know it in your heart. You feel it. Those of you who are seeking God's will, and if you're not feeling it, then come to God and repent for seeking the flesh and not Him. If you're sitting there, if you're sitting there, and you're more worried about what to get someone for Christmas, don't. Don't worry about it. Please don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Please don't worry about it. I'm not playing with you. I'm not joking. I'm very serious. Don't worry about it. I wanted to explain to y'all something I had my cousin to get. They had red bulbs and blue bulbs for night lights. I told her to get me a set of four blue and four, four red. I've got little lamps that take night lights in them, okay? And I'm going to put a blue and a red, and I'm going to put let two of them burn over on my shelf where my angels and stuff are. I use the red as a symbol of the blood of Jesus, and I use the blue as a symbol of grace. The blood brought grace. Without the blood, there is no grace. Today, you need to come and be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. I know there's many churches out there that aren't teaching about sin or repentance. Well, there's no way to be born again unless you repent of the old Jew. Come before the Lord and say, God, forgive me. Repent for your sins. Do you have a name, each and every one of them? No, because God knows you can't remember everything you've done wrong. That's why we're told to repent daily of our sins, because... We, being in the flesh, are still in the sin nature because of the flesh. You know, you've still got that flesh fighting against you. If someone says something you don't like, you may look at them in a way that hurts them. Maybe what they said to you hurt, but you hurt them too. Well, what do you think that has to do with in the Bible? I can tell you what it has to do. If they rendered evil to you and you turn around and eat, rendered evil back to them, you're repaying evil for evil. God says to abstain from all sorts of evil. You can read that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Go about midway down to about, I think it's chapter 8 or 9, and read about 15 or 16. And you'll read where it says to abstain away from evil. Brothers and sisters, we need to be in the Word of God. We need to let the Word of God be the light to our path because I'm telling you, there's no time to play anymore. There is no time to play anymore. We need to be real. There's a mighty movement sweeping the land. There's two different ones. There's the evil movement and there's a Christ movement that's moving. And it isn't being brought by most of these TV evangelists either. It's not be being brought by many YouTube channelers either. The YouTube circuit is being used for good and bad. Okay? We need to seriously be seeking God right now more than ever we need when we have we're sitting around not doing anything you know I, I, I'm asking God before you brothers and sisters right now Lord let my spirit constantly be in prayer to you let it be opened up talking to you at all times because God there's too many lost out there not to be praying without ceasing God give me the words to speak to that one ear out there that needs to hear it please in Jesus name Amen my heart aches for you who are lost because you know not where you're heading. Jesus is coming. He's coming soon. <sighs> People take a lot of parts of the Bible like therefore is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. And that's true. For those of us who are serving the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no condemnation. Condemnation is... Guilt. It, it, it's a form of guiltiness. It's a, for, a form of feeling wrong for your sins because you know. I'm not talking about these people who say they're in Christ, going out there and sinning, and thinking, well, they're therefore no condemnation. Now there should be condemnation in you because you're not truly serving God, or you wouldn't be doing the things you're doing. 
because it's like we're engaged to Jesus Christ and we go out there and we sin. It's like you cheating on your wife or you cheating on your husband or you cheating on your, 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 your fiancé, be it man and woman, not man and man. And you may say, well, you're man and you love Jesus. That's because in heaven there is no male or female. And being engaged to Jesus is not a marital, earth, earthly marriage. It is a, it's a spiritual marriage. It's a marriage of righteousness. It's a marriage of love. It's a marriage of compassion, kindness. It's because of that engagement in all of us who are truly engaged to Jesus that we're able to get on here and tell you the truth, to shine the light of Christ upon you that you may see in the darkness that you're living in, that Jesus is calling you home. He's calling you to the sheepfold before it's too late. Brothers and sisters, we need to pray for those who are lost. Time is running out. There is, there is no time to play games. There's no time to play Christian. There's good and evil in everything we do. There's good and evil on Facebook. There's good and evil on... And I'm telling you, I really feel it right now. I'm, 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 I'm probably going to be doing away with my Facebook. I don't think I'll be going on it anymore. Uh, if those of you who are on my Facebook want to uh, PM me and ask me how to get a hold of me um, away from Facebook, then please do so. Because what I will probably do is give you my Yahoo Messenger, and I will check for offline messages um, in the evening when I get on my desktop. Because I don't have my Yahoo Messenger on this computer, because it's 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 a, just a, it's just a notebook, and it doesn't have a lot of memory, so I don't want to mess up what memory I have on here. So you just get in touch with me through a PM within the next few days, because I truly believe I'm doing away with Facebook. I am going off Facebook. I don't want to be on Facebook anymore. So if you please would uh, just, you know, contact me by PM within the next few days. Lord willing, I will no longer be on Facebook. I'm doing away with it. I'm done with it. I don't want Facebook no more. Okay? I'm probably going to share this on Facebook. Not that anybody ever pays attention to anything on Facebook, but hopefully they will. Um, the reason why I'm leaving Facebook is because I don't feel the God's in it anymore. I know there's people on there that's... The ones who are in there spreading the gospel, let God be the glory. And I'm not coming against any of you. Continue to go. I just feel like my time on Facebook is up. And I'm leaving it. I'm going to deactivate both of my accounts. Uh, the first account I'm going to deactivate it this evening. When I get time. And... Those of you who have videos you need to share with me, you can send them in a private message here on... Um, YouTube, or you can share them in the description uh, below the description box in the comments. This is one I think you need to CC. You know, I think you need to see a CC or Cecil. Watch this. I, I don't watch everything. If I don't get back to you, it doesn't mean I don't love you. It just means hey, I wasn't drawn to watch it, and I go by what I feel. I don't go for all people who say they hear from the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Not everyone who says it is seeing, is hearing from God. Brothers and sisters, we need, to, we need to use discernment right now more than ever before. Jesus is coming, and you need to be ready. You know, when I came on here, I didn't know how long my video was going to go. It's been over 30 minutes already. I don't like to say, well, I looked down, it was 316, 33, 16. <laughs> um, brothers, sisters, please look up. Jesus is coming. I hope this video reaches someone that needs it and, and you know if you don't know who Jesus is come to him today stop playing it's time to be praying we we love you here at Last Chance Ministries but Jesus loves you more keep looking up for your redemption Charles Knight God bless you see you soon with Jesus bye and so you know you guys can see before I sign off he finally settled down After all that running and everything, he finally settled down. Isn't that something? <laughs> but he's a little baby, and he knows Daddy loves him. Love you all. Please pray for the lost. Keep us in your prayers. God bless.